Dunn's Woods was the actual campus in 1885. This is the iconic representation of the Woodland Campus at Indiana University. The buildings were built at the edges of Dunn's Woods and they were going to be enclosing Dunn's Woods in a line of buildings, like a quadrangle of buildings with the woodland at the heart of the campus. It was an essential element in the identity of this university. I don't think there's very many universities, if any, that have a woodland at the center, at the heart of the campus. It's been about 125 years since this ground became the campus of Indiana University. And over that time, the attitudes towards Dunn's Woods have changed. 1885, it was just seen just a, as a piece of undeveloped land. And then by 1900 or so, the university started uh, consulting to talk about the future buildings and the grounds of, of the university. And that's when various landscape architects said that, that this is a characteristic feature that should be preserved and enhanced all over the campus, you know, even as the campus expanded. The idea was, let's not build within Dunn's Woods, let's build on the perimeter and also buy new land to build new buildings. But the idea that the, the woods and these wonderful patriarchs of the forest, that was one of the terms they used, uh, was a essential element. Dunn's Woods became this wonderful uh, resource to think about the woodland character of this campus and by extension the woodland character of southern Indiana. It's one of the important reasons that this campus is considered to be one of the most beautiful in the nation. Dunn's Woods has a rich variety of plant life including oaks, hickories, tulip poplars, and wildflowers. This plant life in turn supports a variety of animals and microorganisms and if you're observant you can see caterpillars and butterflies, many bird species including Cooper's hawks, wrens and woodpeckers, box turtles, chipmunks and mushrooms among many other species. This interdependent web of life provides us with oxygen, a biological carbon sink, absorption of storm water, and many other fundamentally life-supporting services. Dunn's Woods has been protected from clearing and building construction for over a hundred years, but it nonetheless suffers a severe threat from exotic invasive plant species. Purple winter creeper has spread throughout the woodland, choking out native wildflowers and regenerating tree seedlings. And this also degrades the insect life, the bird life, and the life of other animals and microorganisms that have co-evolved with and are thus interdependent with the native plant species. We have an interdisciplinary group of faculty, students, staff and community members who have been working to remove purple winter creeper and other exotic invasives from the woods and to plant in a variety of native woodland species. Recently, two severe windstorms did a substantial amount of damage in the woods, greatly elevating the threat from exotic invasive plant species. The windstorms took out dozens of trees, completely uprooting them, snapping them in half, even peeling their bark down like a banana. And this created huge gaps in the canopy and has also left us with large areas of bare ground. We know from research and experience that purple winter creeper, Japanese bush honeysuckle, tree of heaven, 
and other exotic invasive plant species, as well as noxious weeds like poison ivy, will readily move into these open areas. So in the coming months, we can expect to see an acceleration of the invasion of Dunn's Woods by these species and a corresponding degradation in the native plant, animals, and microorganisms. So it's critical that we act quickly to plant in native trees, shrubs, wildflowers, ferns, and woodland grasses into these open areas re-establishing a healthy native community that can be resilient against invasion. Herman Wells served the university as either president or chancellor for 63 years. He loved trees, he protected trees, he instilled the love of the Wilden campus through his actions, through speeches, and instilled this culture of caring for trees all around the IU campus. So our predecessors showed great foresight in preserving this beautiful woodland and we are really at a crossroads where we have the choice, we, the decisions that we make right now about the kinds of species that we put into this woods and the care that we give it to bring back the natural heritage will influence the character of the woods and of this campus for generations to come.